Well, good morning, everyone. Um, I am um, certainly honored to be able to introduce to you um, the Central Mountain Middle School team. Um, I had the opportunity to work with them the past few years, and I'm certainly very fortunate because they all support my son's district that he attends school in. So um, uh, Miss Michelle Blackburn is the tier one coordinator. Ms. Sarah Strauss is um, also a tier one coordinator. And I know Ms. Sarah also um, helped to support the student led team as well. And I'm not sure if Ms. Michelle has, I'm sure she will tell you if that's the case also. Um, and Dr. Miller is um, someone who, who I've had the opportunity to work with for a number of years and I'm very grateful to know. And she um, certainly has been um, tier one, tier two, and pretty much supported all three tiers across PBIS. So um, our own local expert here on PBIS. So I'm going to turn it over to them. Thank you. Thank you, Kelly. And thank you for inviting us. We're excited to be here um, and talking with all of you guys about what we do at Central Mountain Middle School, Keystone Central School District. It's right outside of... Um, uh, Center County, um, we have Lock Haven is the big city at, at uh, Keystone Central School District, Lock Haven University, if you've heard of that. So that's the area where we are. Um, our, what we're going to talk to you about today is team success, working together um, in our middle school setting. We have been with PBIS and doing PBIS in our middle school for um, 10 years. We're into our 11th year. I've been there, I think, for eight of it, eight of those years. And I am currently the, the one of the tier one coordinators. Um, and I'm also a social studies teacher. And I'm also the co-advisor of our PBIS student team as well. So I help coordinate the student team and the tier one staff team. And we also have Michelle Blackburn. Michelle, you want to introduce yourself? Hello, everybody, and thanks for coming. Um, I actually worked elementary school for 15 years and was part of their PBIS team at the elementary level. Um, the school that I was working in closed and I've been at the middle school for now four years and part of the PBIS team um, here at the middle school. So I am not part of the student team. There is another faculty staff member who does run that with uh, Mrs. Strauss. And then uh, Mrs. Miller, Billy, Dr. Billy Miller is part of the uh, tier two, the tier two coordinator at Central Mountain Middle School. Hi, I'm Billy Miller. Um, I've been with PBS since Kelly started when I was back in Williamsport School District. Um, I was in Williamsport as an elementary counselor for 19 years and then moved to Keystone Central. And this is my fourth year at the middle school. So it's been interesting to come from a program that's been doing it for a long time and then coming into a new setting and seeing what we can do to make things better and improve. And I think that's the crux of our presentation today. And these other two ladies, including Kelly, um, are a wealth of knowledge about how to just keep that momentum going. Or if you are in the infancy stages, especially of tier two, you know, what are some things that you can do to improve that? So I hope you enjoy our presentation. All right. You can move ahead, please, Kelly. So just a little bit, a little agenda here for you, what you can look forward to. It's about um, our presentation. You're going to learn about how we establish teams at our middle school to accomplish the PBIS goals, our goals, and to meet student behavior and academic needs. We'll talk about our demographics, the multi-tier behavioral framework that really we've used to um, develop everything around. Then we're going to get into staffity buy-in because that's very important in order to have a successful PBIS program. Staffity rewards, we, they love those rewards too. Uh, fundraising, which at whenever we went to the Hershey, the um, uh, forum at Hershey just this past November, that was a that was a question that a lot of people had. We we recognized, so we wanted to address that today to see if maybe we could reach out to anyone that might need help with that. And then we're also going to discuss resource mapping for tier two interventions, um, and and give you some resources on how you can do that and take that back to your buildings as well. All right, you can move ahead, please, Kelly. 
All right, a little bit about Central Mountain Middle School. But before I get started, I just want to let you know that if you have any questions or comments that you want us to comment on or answer, please go ahead and shoot those in the chat. That should be open for everybody, and we will try to monitor that as we go. So at uh, Keystone Central School District, there's approximately 3,397 students. Um, but at our middle school, we have 910 students, and that is actually grades uh, five through eight. Uh, four years ago, we closed in the elementary school that I was at, and they moved all of the fifth graders in the district to the middle school. It's been quite an adventure. Um, we are 89.39% white, 1.64 African-American, um, uh, 5.36 multiracial, and 3.39 Latino. We have 177 students who are in the special education, and that's not including uh, speech and language. 20 students are enrolled in emotional support, and we have a 96.9% .9 attendance rate. Um, I believe that has improved some this year um, as we, we have new administration this year, we're doing a few more things uh, to address that. So that has improved. One of the other things that we thought was important to note, we originally had our poverty rate uh, on here, which I think is important. However, because our lunch and our breakfast are free, um, those parents aren't filling out the paperwork so we don't feel that it's really an accurate uh, measure of what our poverty, poverty rate really was. So we did pull that off of there. Um, but so that's a little bit about Central Mountain Middle School. Okay, so the next slide is to me one of the most important slides and it's something that Kelly really showed me when I was in Williamsport and we were starting to make our tier ones better and start to branch out into making tier two. So um, we'll go over it in more detail in the next slides, but we start with the outcomes. So what are the academic behavior outcomes that we want? Um, then number two, supporting the decision-making with data, because if you don't use data, you don't know, you know if you're on target or not. The practices, and that supports the student behavior, the interventions and strategies that are evidence-based and not just things you pull off of Pinterest and things like that really getting good programming in there and practices that support the student behavior. And then number four is systems. So this supports staff behaviors. Um, you know, none of us have enough time and we need to make good systems in place so that things flow and um, can really make things easier for your staff. So next slide. All right, so we've all heard of MTSS and things like that. The first part again is those outcomes. So start with what are the, th the outcomes that you want? You want higher attendance rate, lower office referrals, um, higher academic achievement. You need to start off with the end in, in mind first so that you can kind of drive what you're doing. Next is the data. So again, you need to know what the data is. If you have no idea, it's like you're you're blindly trying to fix things, but you don't know for sure what you're fixing. So we'll talk a little bit more about, you know, what kind of data that you can use. Are you using universal screeners? Are you monitoring ODRs, office discipline referrals in Swiss, hopefully? Are you looking at attendance? Are you looking at, at grades? Um, and it's important to then progress monitor interventions that you're doing to say, is this intervention working? If you're wasting your time on an intervention and not looking at the data, um, so progress monitoring of each intervention is really important. Um, and then one of the last things that usually comes for people is fidelity, but it's really important. If you're not doing fidelity checks on your different interventions, you're not really going to get the best um, effect um, if you're not doing things the right way. Next is practices. Um, so this supports the student behavior, and obviously it needs to be evidence-based interventions. Again, my biggest pet peeve is people doing things on Pinterest, not dissing Pinterest because I like it, but you need to use evidence-based programs that research has shown that these things are effective. Um, so that's really important. I think the other thing there for practices is what are the things that you're putting in place? So like for tier one, are you teaching the expectations twice a year? Are you looking at the school-wide data, the big seven report every month for your tier one meetings? In tier two, are you doing check-in, check-out, mentoring, check-in, connect, 
things like that that are evidence-based? And then are you doing progress monitoring to say, is this kid doing well and check in, check out? If not, why waste your time and that student's time? So doing that progress monitoring, and again, the fidelity checks is, and we're guilty of it too, one of the last things that people check typically do, but those fidelity checks really help to fine tune what you might be missing and it helps to um, increase the, the effectiveness of the interventions that you're putting towards kids. Number four is the systems. To me, this is one of the most important things because if you don't have good systems in place, it's so hard to get the other three. Um, and I think coming to this building has been a perfect example. When I first got here, Sarah Strauss was like basically the only one. She was the only one that did tier one. And like, I get emotional thinking about it because she just was nonstop. And it, it, you know, it, it's hard to do things by yourself. Michelle joined her and the two of them are like a dynamic duo. Like they just have a system in place that they can really get things done well. And we'll talk more specifically about that kind of stuff, but that those systems are, are so very important. Um, you know, we all need to work smarter and not harder, right? None of us have enough time. And so understanding how important all four of these come together is truly going to make things better. When we leave Keystone Central, if the three of us leave, the systems we have in place, things are going to continue to go. If I retire in three years, which is my goal, things are still going to happen because we've got better systems in place now. We didn't have that four years ago. So if any slide is... One of the most important, it's truly understanding all four of these and then trying to, to figure out how you can do these the best. Um, I have a bunch of notes here, but I have so much stuff. So I, I guess that's the big thing is just to look at like, what are your systems? And we'll talk about that in more detail later. The biggest thing I would recommend for all of this is if you can... Um, work with your IU person. Kelly was my IU person in, in Waymesport School District. And she just helped to, to brainstorm all this and helped us so that we weren't trying to do this on our own. And we'll talk more about summer meetings and different things like that that can help. But I really encourage you to, to work with your IU person because they're the ones that can really help you to get all four of these systems in place. So the next slide just shows on the top left, it does take patience and typically a few years to get things in place. So don't get frustrated. Um, be patient with your systems in order to get better data and improve your practices and you'll see better outcomes. So next, um, Sarah's gonna talk with you about how to get Staffily buy-in. I loved that framework there because that systems part was so important for us. I feel like our school is in a great place right now and I think that that was part of what we were missing was that the systems, we had some other things um, in play, but it was, it felt disconnected and having that systems part, I think pulls it back together, um, pulls all those other things together really well. Um, and it also helps with getting staffity buy-in. Um, absolutely. I, I wouldn't say that I was doing things all on my own a few years ago. Um, but there, there was a lot of it and, and there wasn't time for me to do it. So I wasn't given time to do that. Um, and it felt like if I wasn't given time, then it wasn't that important to the school. Right. Um, but now we've changed some things and we, we see the value of it and we feel the value. We feel valued as well. So one thing that we do is, um, we have staff team meetings every two weeks and we have built in PLC time that we do that. And that's before the students arrive. It's in my opinion, it's great to do it at the beginning of the day because we are fresh. We are ready to go. We have our energy and our ideas. Um, we have met previously at the end of the day. Um, and that was after students left. And that was on our own time. Um, last year, we got paid in the morning because we didn't have PLC time at the beginning of the day. Um, so there was some grant money to get uh, people paid for that. Um, so if that's something that your school might have, if you don't have the building PLC time, see and try to get it if you can. Um, or if you can get paid or, with some grant money possibly for people. But even before that, it was just volunteers who would stay after school. 
And that was really, it, it was really hard to find people that would have that commitment and dedication um, because we all have our own lives as well with families and um, our personal lives of things that we, you know, we need to go do um, and want to do. So that has been really, really helpful um, to have that PLC time. And once a week we meet with our small group. And then on the other weeks, we meet um, out with our the rest of the staff of our school, and that's when we can, can communicate with them. We also, if you look under our organization of teams, um, and that's tier one and tier two, two different teams, and Billy will talk more about that later. Um, but we, our staff teams include representatives from all grade levels, from itinerants. I'm um, not all itinerants, but um, I, there's itinerant representation there special education representation, counselor representation, principals um, as well, representation. And we, um, we, you know, there's always room for improvement. We would like to get parents in there. We do have teachers that are also parents, but we want to get parents meeting during that time too, and possibly get a student from our student team to come in at that meeting too. So we still have, you know, ways that we can improve too. And we, we notice that and realize that. Um, our student team has been going strong since the start, um, I believe for 10 years, we've had our student team and we go and we present places, which has been awesome the past few years. Um, we meet during club time and we meet other needed times too. We try to meet once a week with that student team, even if it's for 20 minutes, um, and because they are the voice for our rewards and our recognitions and the voice for our students and, um, and what the students want, and then to get those things done and accomplished too. Um, administration, administration support is very important as well. Um, the way that we got started in our school was it was a, it, our assistant principal that actually got it started and going in our school. And he was our leader. He was our facilitator and our coordinator. Um, and then he left the school and it did kind of fall apart. Who's going to take over? Um, and that's kind of where I stepped in, <laughs> um, unofficially. And then it just kind of stayed with me, but, um, principal representation, in all the meetings, then and getting the principals to, to be there and be a part of those discussions. And now our principals, and we have some new administration this year, but now they're not just there and representing, but they, they are giving us ideas as well. And it's, it, it feels like we're all a team. It's not just, okay, we're sitting here talking, but they have other ideas at other times too. And it's, it's a dialogue and it's a conversation. Um, coaches, we, one of the best things to happen for us is um, Michelle and I, we both have PBIS duty periods to complete any work that we need to do. Um, for recognizing students and rewarding students and recognizing staff and rewarding staff and um, lessons, knowing uh, the lessons and the booster lessons and meeting with staff and meeting with teachers, um, yeah, other teachers if they need help um, and, you know, truly coaching if needed um, and meeting with students if we need to. Um, so that has been very, very helpful to have. I wish I had two of those periods. <laughs> Um, but I will take one. It's great to have. Um, if you have duties for your staff at your school, like if you have recess duty or if you have hall duties or um, lunch duties and things like that. So instead of having those duties, we have this a PBIS duty. Uh, and it's it has been very, very helpful to to accomplish our goals, to get things done that we need to get done. Um, and we also have a full day paid in the summer. We have um, meeting to plan for next school year. So we actually have a district-wide meeting, which is great to meet as a whole district. And we talk about our district level goals. We get to meet with our schools during that time too, to come up with our school goals. And then another day too, um, to meet just with our school to actually plan and execute um, how are we going to accomplish those goals. Um, and in the past, we have invited students to to those as well. Um, and communication to staff, getting the, that communication out was really important for us. Bi-weekly grade level meetings with the staff um, and it, it's each grade. PBIS calendar, you can see a picture there. 
This actually has helped a lot because we have a lot of documents to share with our um, staff. And instead of sending different emails and it's in the email, it's in the email. Didn't you read the email? <laughs> it seemed like we just kept saying that over and over again. Um, we put and linked everything into the calendar. It's in a Google slide and we just have a slide for each month. Um, and then when things change, as they usually do with, you know, remote days and snow and just other things that happen, right? Um, it's a way that we can be flexible and we can communicate with staff. Um, it is wonderful, a wonderful way to communicate and just to, to for them to go back there um, anytime that they need. We link in our agendas for our meetings. We link in um, our booster lessons. You can see we have, um, when we came back, we had booster lessons and activities and um, it's, and just reminders for staff too. There's also a weekly newsletter that our administration sends out. So this is sent out every single week and they get weekly um, updates on, okay, here are the things that are going on with PBIS or um, other things within our school. So they see that weekly um, and they can access it at any time that they need to and see changes on it too. So it's it's a great way to communicate with our staff, especially with a five through eight building when we have so many um, you know, different schedules and different things that are going on. Sarah, can I just add one thing? It's not like it, it is a lot of PBIS stuff in there because we do so much, but it is also stuff that building I don't you can see, I think one of the spots said like fire drill or something like that. So just daily reminders that come out from administration um, that we can put on there, map testing. So we have map testing on there just so it's all one one location that we, we can go to. Um, yeah. And that when people schedule their res recognition rallies, um, if fifth grade schedules it, they might think, okay, it only involves fifth grade, but really there are all these other um, special education teachers and interventionists and maybe speech and language teachers, everybody in the building who know that. So we put that information on the calendar too so that they see everything that's going on. You're breaking up a little for me, Michelle. I didn't know if you were for others as well, but. May I just ask a quick question? Yes, please. I, I love this communication tool. And so my question would be, is this a, um, uh, is this, this looks like it's a live document and is it view only for your staff so that they can't go into change or is it editable where they can go in and be like fifth grades having, like how does that organization piece play out? So we, it's viewable to most of our staff. Um, fifth grade does have like a fifth, fifth grade certain representative that would be for tier two that, um, that can make changes if needed, okay. but most people just let Michelle or I know, and then we make the changes on there and it's viewable to most people, but okay. there are some people that do have edit access that can go in there. And, and is this like a goo, like, I don't even know what platform would this be? It's, it's, Google, it's just Google slides, Google slides. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's just Google slides. And we, we found, um, templates, um, and then we we change it. So like at the very the very first slide right now is January because we're in January and all the other um, ones we put to the bottom the past months. And last year was the first year that we started this and it worked really, really well. And we had good um, good feedback from the staff that they really like it. We haven't heard anything negative about about this. I mean. I don't know if you could, right? Say awesome. Anything. Thank you so thank you so much. Thank you for I think the other the other two important things is Sarah has that in um so we have our a Google Classroom for our middle school that's typically all the things that our principals put out to us. So it's all in one place. So we have a PBS section that that's always in there. So again, people know how to get to it because it's in there. And I believe the second way she has it is we get a, a weekly newsletter from our administrators and that link is always there too. So every week it's, it's there, it's all in the same place. So people know where to find it. It, it makes it easier for everybody. Yes, Courtney, thank you. The Google, our Google calendar, we do that for the meetings, for meetings as well. I don't think they usually put like fire drill and things like that in, but that's an idea um, for that. 
Molly, one other thing, if you just, or anybody else, if you search like Google slide blank calendars, we inserted the date and everything like it. We put all the numbers on there for the dates. And then I started to add the days of the cycle on there too. I don't think I did it on this one. I did it after I made the screenshot, but so just blank Google slide calendars. Um, there's a template and then you can just put in your dates and everything on there. It's time yeah. consuming, but it is so helpful. It is. We have a lot of teachers that actually print it out. They print it and then they'll just handwrite it if there are any changes um, to be made, but they like to have that and they have that at their desk. Some of them hang it up even so kids can see these things, this too, um, which it's not geared towards the students, but a lot of this is all, you know, um, for the students as well. But some of it, like a faculty meeting, that's not for the students um, and some of the other things. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, okay. So what we would love to know is we would love, and I don't know, Michelle, if you can put also the Padlet maybe in the chat, um, if, because I don't know if they can, if they're not in our presentation, they might not be able to. Yeah, there we go. So we would love to share and learn from each other right now. And if you could go to the Padlet that's in the chat and under how do you get or improve staff buy-in, um, if you wanna push the plus sign, and then you can share with us any other ways that you have that maybe we could take and improve upon what we have or any ideas that you might have for it. So we'll take about two minutes to give you some time to do that. Share any ideas for staff buy-in. Sarah was just um, messing around with it last night. So she wrote under the, how do you reward staff? But go ahead and write under the one, how do you improve the staff buy-in? We'll sneak over to the next one um, after we present another slide or two. Yeah. We like to know what you do for getting the staff to be on board with you. Oh, you ask the naysayers to be on the team or to help with something. We found that as well. We, as coaches, Michelle and I, one of the things that we're trying to do for ways that we can improve is we're trying to get um, to, to delegate more so that our team feels like they're not just in our meeting and that's it, that they're actually doing some things too. Now we have planning, you know, prep time for the duty. So we're not asking them to do everything, but there are folks that want to help in different ways and that can help using their strengths um, and what they're comfortable doing. So that is something that we're working on. Um, but yeah, ask the naysayers to help with things. A lot of times they do, they have good ideas and they want to share those ideas. So that's a great one. Thank you. Purposely Thank invite you. specific people. Yes. Go ahead, Billy. One thing, be careful about the naysayers, because I know at our high school, they put quite a few naysayers on and it almost brought the team down. So you want to have a balance with that, in my opinion. Absolutely. Thank you. I agree with what Billy said. Um, we had a high school team who was really thinking about um, actually asking one member to step away and not be part of the team because of the negativity. And so my coworker who I've, she's like my mentor, I've been learning from her and she suggested to the team before you ask her to leave, what well, I think she needs a task. So assign her a task, make her feel, you know, that she's, you know, there's a, she's got a purpose here and things have gone so much better. She's still with the team. So things have turned around tremendously. So I think she was just kind of sitting there like twiddling her thumbs. Like I don't have a purpose here. And then the negativity started. So we assigned her a task and things have gone so much better. That's great. That's just like students too, right? I mean, sometimes those students need, need an extra task or job to feel valued or to feel a part of the community. Um, so that's a great, a great thing to do. Thank you. Okay. Well, I'm going to move on here quick to the next slide. Um, Thank you. And that is the, I think the rewards. How yeah, do we reward staff? Yes. Go for it, Michelle. 
All right. So we um, have been doing more of this this year. Um, some of the ways that we have been rewarding staff, you can see our pictures at the bottom. Um, these are all a hit. Everybody's like, whoa, this is great. Um, so we've done muffins at Thanksgiving time. We did pies uh, with a sign that says, any way you slice it, um, we're grateful for you. Uh, we did a hot chocolate bar. That was a really big hit. And we don't let them know ahead of time most of the time. Um, it's sort of in the morning. Hey, stop in for a hot chocolate bar. You can see all the toppings for hot chocolate there in the picture. Uh, we did. We just recently did a thanks a latte. Um, it was hot chocolate, coffee, and tea. The uh, cafeteria workers, she actually fills the, her jugs with water for us, or she filled it with water for hot chocolate as well. Dunkin' Donuts, we called to see um, about getting coffee from them. And they were like, actually, we'll donate the coffee. So they that big brown jug in the back back there, they donated that to us. So that was amazing as well. Um, and then we just bought some, some of the different toppings. Uh, one of the things that we did at PSSA time is uh, last year we had, uh, we got just snacks from Sam's Club and some candy, stuck it in the lounge in baskets and everything. Um, that was one of the one of the first things that we did, and they were the staff went crazy. They I don't know how many thank yous and wow this is awesome. Um, just when when they finally get a break, then a bathroom break, they could go and grab a quick snack and a and a treat. So these have all been really big hits. Some of the other ideas that we've talked about doing this year are um, Sarah and I talked about doing like an apple with dips and toppings, so like melted chocolates and caramel and candies for on the apples. Uh, we also saw and thought about a yogurt bar. Um, and one thing that Sarah did, I see your comment down there about how do you pay for the staff treat? So that's all part of the student team as well. And we'll talk about funding, fundraising for um, fundraising for our whole program. Sarah's going to talk to you about that, I believe, next. So um, one thing that Sarah did for just our little team was chocolate chip cookies, uh, chip chip hooray. Um so we we thought about doing some chocolate chip cookies as well in the staff day room. We do have some leftover from a reward. Uh, so, and they're prepackaged cookies. It's not that they've been sitting there for months that somebody baked, but <laughs> they are prepackaged chocolate, chocolate chip cookies. So that's one good thing about doing the prepackaged things that if you do have extra, then you can use them at a later time. Um, so, and that was a student reward that, that they were left over from. Um, so those are just the treats and things. Another way that we recognize um, staff is some staff shout outs. So we've had our, we just send a quick email to our uh, secretary in the office who does the announcements in the morning and she'll just say things, whatever we, whatever we send her, hey, we just wanted to give a quick shout out to, um, and the last one was one of the music teachers for their Christmas concerts. Um, the, Family and consumer science teacher, she took kiddos over to the elementary school, which is across the parking lot. So we gave a shout out to her for organizing um, that uh, coordination with the elementary school and getting the kids over there to cook and, and make some different things. So just a few things here and there. And again, some people like to be recognized um, in front of other people. Some people don't. So it's a hard balance between making it a big to-do or just something little over the announcements. But I'll tell you what they all love. They all love the treats in the lounge. We didn't hear one complaint. One of the things that we uh, try to also take into concern or consideration though, is that we do have some allergies in our building. So you can see in the first picture, we were just doing muffins. Uh, we have somebody with a peanut allergy um, and we have some gluten. So we did have some bananas there too. Now there were more than just all of this for the muffins. This was just one picture uh, with our, with our large staff. So, um, so try to take into consideration some of those, some of those allergies as well. Um, and your staff will, that's one way to get them to buy into <laughs> some of the things that you're doing. So you treat them like this. And, and then also when you do the rewards and the other things that they have to do, it's not quite as bad. Um, but again, we would like for you to share on the Padlet. So you can either click the link in the chat or click the link there um, in the presentation if you're not just looking at the one that she's presenting. And the second column is how do you reward your staff? Um, I see some of the great things there. Fancy chair, I like that idea. That, that's great. Um, certificates and prizes and candy. I, I, teachers just love, love little treats. 
potluck lunch and breakfast. Um, I saw early release, which would be awesome. The time of the day that we have our least amount of coverage is at the end of the day. So for somebody to come in and cover our room, maybe we could get administration. Is it administration? Whoever put that in there, is it administration that covers your classes if you have early release or is it another faculty member? That might be bad if you're giving somebody else another job. Administration. Yeah, that's awesome. Maybe we could talk them into that, Sarah and Billy. <laughs> yes, thank you. Um, I, I see it, um, Dr. Laura Moran. I saw a question there. Uh, that Billy had addressed, but um, students acknowledging teachers and staff. Yes. Yeah. So if we have um, treats on a cart, we also like the students to go along with um, a staff member to, to take that around. So the students are, are giving them um, the treat. Uh, that's really nice. Another one that we, another thing that um, our school has done is we've done a Google form um, and actually our, we have a leadership class in our school and they do that. They've done this. Um, but there's a Google form that, um, students can fill out. And I think they filled out, like they would fill it out once a marking period. And then that leadership class would take all of, um, they would fill it out for one educator, um, and write down why they're, you know, what that educator did for them or why they really appreciate what they want to thank them for. And then the the leadership class that we had, they would take um, that spreadsheet, they take all those messages, and they'd put them onto a Google slide um, for uh, of that teacher um, that would have all the messages from whatever students for that staff member. And then they'd print those out, and they would give those to the teacher. So I had, uh, you know, we had a, a piece of paper that had all the messages from the students that that wanted to say, we appreciate you and here's why. And it, it was awesome. Those are the best, right? Messages from our students um, and or families, like that's the best. So that was so, so nice to have. And the students were the ones that created the Google form. They were the ones that organized it all and then got it to the staff as well. So for them to be a part of that and to see how, how much that's appreciated, um, was nice too. Okay. So I'm going to go to very quickly how, oh, fundraising, right? This is one, where do you get all this money? Um, we are, we need to, like, we keep coming up with ways to spend money because we, we have made, um, a lot of money in the past few years. So every year, this traditionally we have this snowball dance and it raises about $4,000 because we don't have many dances at our middle school. And so that's a big, a big dance. It's a, a winter dance. We ask staff, we do a sign up genius and we ask our staff to chaperone or to donate chips and drinks. And some people, they love to do that because they can't be there. They can't chaperone. They can't take that time, but they want to do something to help. Right. So they buy a two liter bottle of soda. They donate it to us. Um, we spent money on decorations, pizza um, for the concession stand and the DJ, but the rest is profit. So we made almost $4,000 um, each year through that. We also do a trench ball tournament and that raises about $2,000. We don't um, raise as much with that, but it's a lot of fun and it builds great community because we have to have staff sponsors. So the kids get to create their own teams. It's an after school tournament. Um, it's right after school until about five 30 or six, we have it on two different days because it's gotten so big and we have so many teams that we have to run it, um, two different days and they, we have a staff sponsor. They don't pay for the students. Sometimes the staff sponsors will, but what they do is they help, um, the students get organized. Some, some of the teams do t-shirts and things. And so they'll sit with their staff sponsor and they'll make these shirts or decorate or design, um, and then the staff sponsor can play with them if they want to the game, or they're just there on game day and they're cheering them on and they're encouraging them. And for our middle school students, that's really important. Some of them have never been part of teams, um, or some of them have, and they need, they need a coach there to, um, to keep them calm. Um, but it's, it's a lot of fun for that. We've also done, um, wildcat walk, run and ride is what we call it. Um, and that's, for they don't get to ride anything that's for if people are in wheelchairs or um, things like that they're not bringing their bikes or their skateboards but we go around our track um and we walk we have music out there they can um we raise about two thousand dollars 
but there's music. We've done spirit awards for that too. So um, we encourage them to wear blue and white, our colors. Um, some of them wear like tutus or put the blue spray in their hair and they go all out and get crazy with it, which is really, really fun. But then we just give gift cards um, to the to the kids that had the most spirit. Um, and they're just raising money for how many laps they can walk. Uh, other ideas, um, I know for our mini-thon, we've done stall day before, but that could be a PBIS. That's where um, the students bring in lots of money and however long it takes for you to count the money, they are stalling school. So they get to, you know, be in a classroom and they're coloring or they're doing, they're sitting and talking with their friends or they're playing board games or something, some kind of organized, but it's different. It's not classes. Um, you could have monthly or weekly items that students purchase like pencils, candy canes, popcorn, our elementary school. I know my kids elementary school does that and they love it. And um, they're doing every once a week, I think, or once a month, I'm sorry, they're doing popcorn and like my kids want to spend so much money on popcorn and I'm saying you need one bag. That's it. Um, or you could ask families if they'd like to send a gift. I know our elementary school does that too. Valentine's Day is coming up and um, they buy they buy things that um, are in bulk that are cheaper. And then you you ask families if you'd like to send something to home or to your student on special occasions. So that's another way that you could make some money. So if you want to add anything else onto the Padlet, um, we want to be done here in about 10 minutes to give you some time um, to, to ask questions. But um, if you want to add anything on there of how you, you raise money, um, that would be really helpful. And then you guys can um, share from each other. All right. Thanks, Billy. Okay. So again, um, I like a lot of the stuff that you guys are sharing in the Padlet. So we're excited to learn from you guys as well. So um, rolling along just because of time. Again, this is that first slide. And it just like tier one, all four of these components are important for an effective tier two team. Um, again, if, if, if you don't focus on all four, you're really not going to be able to do things as well as, um, you know, if, the, if there's a part of it that you ignore. All right, so we linked our PBS handbook and this is for tiers one, two, and three. So if you look at it, it's extremely lengthy. Literally everything that we have and we do is pretty well spelled out here. So especially if tier two is something you're, you're, you're doing but not doing quite as well as you'd like, um, I think we have this so that you can literally just copy it and um, copy and paste kind of thing so that you don't have to reinvent the wheel. But especially when you're trying to get new tier two interventions, um, if this can help anybody, we'd, we'd love for you to take a copy of it and just try to help you to, you know, get those entrance and exit criterion for your different tier two interventions, whether it's check in, check out, mentoring, check and connect, um, whatever it might be. So it, it like if it, it's like if there's like almost 50 pages, right, Kelly? All right. So again, the organization of the teams, like most of this is just copied from the slide that Sarah had showed earlier. Um, you got to think outside the box to be able to make those those team meetings happen. So if you don't have those PLC times, like Sarah said, you see if you can find grant money to pay people to get in there. Again, that staff representation is, is crucial, just like it was on tier one. Um, the other thing we pretty much have, if you're not, if, if you're if you're on tier one, you're not on tier two, except you should have one person that's on both because um, that's one of the TFI requirements. Um, and again, we try to get people to spread the wealth. It can't be just one people, one person or a group of people doing it. Um, and the administration support and things like that, all of those things happen again for our tier two. All right, next. So if you are new at doing some tier two things, um, the next slide will show you some samples of what we started with. Um, so check in, check out is the first row. Um, that's a daily behavior chart with, with coach support. Um, we use check in, check out um, in Swiss and then the ODRs in Swiss to monitor 
in progress monitoring if those check-in check-out kiddos are, are doing well or not. For us, we made that entrance criteria three or more ODRs and literally any staff member can be part of check-in check-out, our custodians, anybody. Um, and that's something that's every day. Mentoring and or check and connect um, is weekly coach support. Um, and we try to do like a weekly report card. It's not a daily thing like a check and connect would be. Uh, we try to look at some pre and post measurements. Typically kids in mentoring um, are kids with truancy issues, kids that are at high risk on our universal screener. Again, any staff member in our building can, can be a mentor. Um, including lunch ladies, like whatever, whoever that student identifies um, with is, is who we, you know, cause that's who they're going to listen to. We had one student when Michelle and I were at Dickey that, that she loved, they love the secretary and he would go down with his check-in check-out chart every day and she'd buy him McDonald's if he made certain goals and stuff. So any person can be that. And again, you need to spread the wealth. It can't be just a couple people doing these different tier two interventions. Um, and then small groups, weekly uh, um, instruction of skills. Um, so you want to look at pre and post test that get, that kind of went up above. Um, look at their grades, attendance to decide what kiddos need that. Typically, students with anger issues or anxiety could be in the small groups. And then counselors, social workers, special ed. Again, spreading the wealth. It can't just be one or two people doing that. Um, and typically they're monthly groups, sometimes they're weekly, but it depends on, on the need. Really, we had a question in the chat. When you had talked about um, the target group, you had mentioned about three or more ODRs. So the question in the chat is, were they by a specific time? Um, yes. Like for example, within a certain time frame. That was a really yes. good question. It's three or more ODRs within a one month. And that's loose. We've had kiddos that have had two in one month and one in a previous month. So it's not like it's set in concrete, but um, I, I've had I've had teachers, I've had parents say, I want my kid in check-in, check-out. And we look in Swiss and they have no ODRs. So that's where you, if you have those criteria, which is in that handbook that we shared in that link, it can help you to kind of balance that because you can't put everybody in check-in, check-out and you shouldn't put everybody in check-in, check-out. So then you can say, well, here's our criterion they would be better suited for mentoring. And it just can help you to balance things. Cause I know when we first started in Williamsport, we had like 30 to 40 kids in check in, check out. And you you can't, you can't manage all of that. So you have to have that that criterion of three or more ODRs or whatever you guys decide on your end um, that, that can help you decide what are the interventions that you want to put in place there. And I was just gonna um, add a little note there. As Billy mentioned, that's all, they have that all detailed in their book that you're able to see the entrance um, exit criteria for each intervention. So it's differentiated for each intervention. So it's not three to five ODRs for this specific intervention. They have specific criteria. So that helps them to get students into those tier two interventions in a pretty quick um, turnaround fashion. So the next slide is just a blank one of this. And that's for you if you wanna print it off and go back with your teams because you don't have um, any tier two or you have tier two that's not running as well as you can want it to, you can put the different interventions in there that you want to try to bring. And the the, the parts, the, the columns going across are the important part, trying to get all staff involved and different ways that you can do that to um, basically spread the wealth. All right, next, because I know we want to leave time for questions. So the next slide, um, again, even if you've been doing tier one for a long time, we got to remember that sometimes you have to go back and and fill in the gaps and, you know, things get stale and things like that. So always trying to improve things um, and having the staff understand which youth are able to seed on just check in and check out alone. And sometimes they need layers of different things like a wraparound support or different things outside counseling, different things like that when you're looking at tier two. Use that TFI as a fidelity check on what you're doing along the way. Um, Cause if you're not doing things with fidelity and we're, we're guilty of, we've got to get better at that too. You're not going to get the response you need from the kids as much. Um, 
make sure that tier one is going clear and strong. And if there's things that you need to do to, to make that a little stronger, because sometimes things fizzle out over the years, um, that, that's that's important. Uh, get youth on the PBS team, like Sarah had said, like their voice is powerful. They're, they're going to work harder for rewards that they are coming up with, not things that we're giving to them, rewards giving to them. All right, the next slide, Michelle will go over. You're muted, Michelle. I knew that was gonna happen at some point today. <laughs> Basically, this is just our final um, thank you for coming. And if you have any questions, um, you can contact Sarah and I for tier one or Billy for tier two. If you reach out to the wrong person, we will direct it to who it needs to go to, of course. Um, again, we are from Central Mountain Middle School. If you have any, this is your time now to ask questions. Uh, if you'd like to type them in the chat, you can do so, or um, you can unmute yourself and ask. It's always good to hear a voice instead of just sort of us talking to this to ourselves, I guess. It. <laughs> and I did forget on the Padlet, we do have an, an area there for people to share one or two things that you think you're going to try to do to improve on tier two. So if you wanna to go to the Padlet and share some of that, but. Um, we also want you to have time for questions and answers right now. Yeah. And again, bookmark the Padlet um, because it's not just, it's not all our ideas. It's everybody's ideas. And when we went to that uh, PBA, PBA, I, I can't even say it right now, but when we went to the conference, <laughs> um, it was, we, it's always so helpful to go back and look at the ideas that everybody else gave us and be like, oh, this is really great. Um, it's great to learn from one another. We can't always think of everything ourselves. So can some people just share what, what are some things that you're, you think um, you're doing? Thanks. There are some questions in the, in the uh, chat. Billy, do we have a training we use for the check-in, check-out mentors? So again, that's kind of what I talked about. You, those things should come from your IU person. Kelly would open that up and probably about 20 of us from different um, districts in our IU would go to Kelly when she she was with us when I was with her and there's whole day trainings on check in check out that's the best way to do otherwise it's kind of haphazard and you're not going to do as well um, so really relying on your IU to to build that in a stronger way and, and go to the trainings not just trying to invent it yourself and our entire PBIS, this whole presentation is linked. It's actually linked on the playbook. Um, and it's also now linked in the drive that was sent. I'm not sure if you guys all got the drive as well. I believe that you did. Um, but it's also linked in the drive. Um, so that is all there. The handbook is in there as well. Um, if you do, if you end up losing it or can't find the link or whatever that was just posted in the in the chat that Kelly posted for us. So if you lose anything, it is all linked at the bottom of the playlist or the, of the playbook under where our Zoom link was. And we appreciate you all for coming and we hopefully hopefully you've um, gained some something, learned something from us that you can take back, back to your, your schools. Um, and I'm sure we will all learn from you as well as we go back to that Padlet and review your responses. Yes, thank you everybody. Have a great thank day. You. Thank you so much for um, agreeing to present for us. We always learn something new to take back and um, certainly put into practice. And I appreciate you sharing all your resources. I know I've been continuing to share it. So um, we really appreciate you doing this today. I keep hearing comments of how um, much people appreciated it. So thank you all so much. Very much appreciated. Great job. Thank you. Thanks, Dawn. Yeah.